Film editing or cutting is the art, technique and practice of assembling shots in a coherent sequence. Over the last 120 years, editing has developed incredibly, from the Lumiere Brothers to the La Nouvelle Vague or the French New Wave. We will also explore the types of editing devices. The pioneers of editing. The Lumiere Brothers were some of the first filmmakers. They did not engage in any real film editing. They preferred to use static shots. The arrival of the train, which was made in 1896, was one of the first films ever made. The film showed audiences a train moving towards a platform. The audience was unfamiliar with film, so they ran from their seats as they were scared the train would hit them. The Lumiere Brothers saw no future in film production. George Miles was one of the first cinema magicians. Miles specialised in creating special effects straight onto the film. His most famous film was called A Trip to the Moon, which was made in 1902. The film featured some of his best special effects. Miles asked the Lumiere Brothers to sell him a camera, but they refused as he saw no future in film, so he built his own camera. Miles would paint straight onto the film to add colour and to make special effects. Miles made countless films, however, he saw no future in film. In 1914, Miles became bankrupt and couldn't make films anymore, so he shut his production company, Star Films Company. Edwin S. Porter Porter's most famous film is The Great Train Robbery, which is classed as the first edited film. Porter used cross-cutting or parallel editing to show what occurs in two different places. He did this to create effects on the viewer. In his famous film, The Life of an American Fireman, Porter shows a fireman sitting in a chair, while showing clips of a woman running around in a burning building. When watching, the viewer feels scared for the woman and wishes the fireman would get there quick to save her. Though Porter didn't use technology to its full potential, he was first to introduce the concept of cross-cutting to American cinema. This allowed others to use it or develop it. D.W. Griffiths Griffiths used different camera angles to create effects in his films. When editing his films, Griffiths would use all the camera shot footage using different angles where he wanted. The Birth of a Nation is classed as one of his best works. The film tells the story of a group of KKK members rushing in to save the day. Although this film shows racism, Griffiths later apologised for the film's meaning. The film used different camera shots such as close-ups, good shots and more. It's one of the first films to use multiple shots. Kuleshov. Kuleshov discovered that the audience derived more meaning through the sequence of images by creating emotional connections rather than the actual performance of an actor. When people watched the Kuleshov effect, they congratulated the actor on his performance. However, what they didn't know was that the shot of the man was actually the same shot used over and over. It is a mental phenomenon by which the viewer derives meaning from the interaction of two shots, sequential shots, and from a single shot in isolation. Eisenstein. Eisenstein, inspired by Griffiths and Gulashov, made powerful montages to manipulate audiences' emotions and feelings. Eisenstein was from Russia, so he was limited at what he could film. His most famous film was Battleship the Tenth Film. It's famous because of one scene. The massacre is famous due to its emotional force on the audience. The use of shots show in the chaos, the citizens running down the stairs, the soldiers killing people. When the audience watch this, they feel deep emotions. La Nouvelle Vague or the French Wave. The French New Wave directors took the rules established by Hollywood and threw them out of the window. They created a fresh editing style and techniques such as the jump cut and breaking the 180 degree rule. This caused their movies to look unfinished and they didn't make sense. By breaking the 180 degree rule, the audience or viewer becomes confused. The 180 degree rule is essential. It keeps a constant flow between characters. For example, two people are talking, a camera on each, but if you were to take a third camera and put it behind the 180 degree line, it, be it begins to confuse the viewer. The evolution of modern editing. In camera editing. Simply starting and stopping filming with the film in the camera, allowing the filmmakers to move the camera between shots or to create special effects. This meant that the actors had to stay in the exact same position till the camera was in place. This was a slow way of producing the film. Filmmakers realised they could glue and cement pieces of film together to make different films run together. Editors would have used scissors, a magnifying glass, tape and cement. 
This was a very early method and took a lot of time to do. Mavola and Flatbeds. The first Mavola was sold to Douglas Fairbanks, one of the first movie stars, on September the 16th, 1924, for $125. This allowed editors to, for the first time, view individual shots. This was done so they could decide where to make the cut. It also allows two tracks of sound to be synced and played alongside the picture. Flatbeds more or less did the same, but it was controlled by two foot pedals and a handbrake, which was used for cutting shots. Video editing. Video editing was the birth of non-linear editing. It allowed editors to watch shots and then record them onto a second tape. This method may still be used today. Digital editing. This is the most modern form of editing. It is a computer program which allows an editor to quickly and accurately cut shots. It made it easier to create special effects. It also allowed an editor to work wherever he wanted as he wasn't tied to an edit suite. Types of digital editing software are Adobe Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas Pro and Final Cut Pro. Non-linear and linear editing. L linear video editing is a video editing post-production process of selecting, arranging and modifying image and sound in a predetermined ordered sequence. In digital editing, non-linear editing is a method that allows you to access any frame in a digital video clip regardless of sequence in the clip. One of the purposes of editing is time. This is where you can speed up, slow down, compress time or stretch time. You can also use flashbacks or flash forwards to fit a specific time and to control time within the narrative. Another purpose of editing is space. This is where you can create a logical and believable space between characters or objects not sharing the same shot and finally rhythm this is the duration between shots controls the flow and beat of the moving image production which allows the audience to understand the message or story